Hello, hello. I am letting everyone in. You guys can hear me, right? Just want to make sure you all can hear me. Hi, Betsy. I'm so glad you're joining us. Thank you. All right. I'm going to make sure you guys are all muted and... We're going to wait till 7.20 before we get started. So guys, hang out. I just got to grab something. All right, so this is basically for the Holiday Shred Macros 101, but it's also a weekly meeting. So it's going to be a refresher and a reminder and maybe a get refocused because we're going to talk about macros. All right, we're going to give it one more minute. Someone just messaged me that they're getting on. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Hi, everyone. You guys are all hiding from me, which is okay. I'll just talk. Don't worry. Actually, you know what? Let me put this light on behind me. And my knee. Okay. So let's get started. Um, I can't see my notes without my glasses. Um, so this is Macros 101, and it's for the couple of people that I brought in for the holiday shred. Um, and I actually opened it up to five. We had five sign up and four are sticking to it. And one asked to be held over till the January session because she actually has to have surgery. So um, there's four that joined the new session. Um, Betsy, Julie, Lauren, and Kim. And Kim has not signed in yet, but she will be. Um, actually, I know her from Orange Theory, so she'll be getting on here. Okay. Um, so we also have people from the previous session that might pop in. They might not because they've already heard this stuff before, but 
That's quite all right. Not a big deal. So today we're going to talk about tracking tips. We're going to talk about um, tracking your food, what, what you want to focus on. Um, and if need be, I will do a follow-up meeting probably on Sunday. Um, so we'll go from there. So um, first thing I want to talk about is the importance of macros. Macros is your proteins, your carbs, and your fats. Proteins is the building block of your body, of your muscles, of everything. And that is the most important macro that we need to hit every day. Um, carbs and fats are important as well, but they're gonna come along with the proteins. If you get your proteins in, everything else will fall into place. If I stop talking, it's because I'm letting somebody else in the meeting. I just want to make sure I'm recording also. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, so proteins is the most important. And what protein does for you, it helps with muscle recovery, muscle repair, muscle building, cellular growth. It actually helps with some energy as well. And then we have our carbs. And our carbs, obviously, we all know that's our fuel, right? Um, unfortunately we all love our carbs and it's easy for us to hit our carbs. So if we focus on our protein, then the carbs won't be top priority and you might be okay not hitting them as high. And then your fat is all for your hair, your skin, your nails. So when you hear people say they're on a no fat diet, you're going to start to see their hair fall out. They're going to start to see their hair fall out. They're going to start to see... Um, their nails get brittle. Their skin is going to look very dry and flaky and have not that glow that we should have. Um, if you hear people say that are on a no carb or a low carb, they're going to have no energy. They are going to seem very um, tired all the time. They're not going to have any motivation to work out. Um, and we don't want that. And then Pretty much no one gives up protein because you have to have protein in your body, right? So we want to focus on protein, but carbs and fats are just as important, but they're going to fall into line when you track your macros. So when you are looking at your numbers and you see I gave you um, 100 proteins, you can go over or under that number by 10. So it could be 110 proteins or it could be 90 grams of protein. And... That gives us room to play as we get closer to our goal to tighten up that number a little bit. Once you're close to your goal, you kind of want to stay really close to that number. Um, but right now you have that leeway. So focus on the number I gave you and the 10 grams over and under. So how I want you to think about macros is, and I use this analogy all the time, is I want you to think about your monthly budget at your house. You have a certain amount of money that comes in every month. Let's hypothetically say it is, I'm going to use a small, easy number, $5,000 a month you get, comes into your home, right? And out of that $5,000, every month you pay your bills the first of the month. We pay our mortgage, we pay our car payments, we pay our insurance, our, you know, our electric, all your main bills get paid out of that $5,000. Anything left is your disposable income. You've already used that discretionary stuff, right? So now we have our disposable income and that's your hair, your, your shopping, getting your nails done, maybe your kids' sports, whatever the case may be. Um, but if you were to have a $5,000 budget and you decided that you don't wanna drive that Toyota anymore, now you wanna drive that Rolls Royce. And what if your $5,000 budget doesn't allow for that? What would happen? right? It wouldn't work. You wouldn't be able to make that payment. So I want you guys to think about your macros, your daily number, which would be your caloric number. And then I want you to break it down into your protein, carbs, and fats as you're thinking about your daily budget. And we're going to do it together. We're going to talk about it. So if I were to Take my daily budget of food, I would take my daily budget at home, and I paid everything, and I have nothing left for my in my daily budget or my monthly budget, would I be able to buy anything? No, right? So that means if you were to eat all your lauded macros for the day, 
you would have no allowance, nothing left in your budget for you to continue eating. Now, let's say you have that $5,000 budget and you don't even look at your account and you buy everything that you eat, everything, or no, you're doing food, we're doing home budget. You buy everything you want to buy. You shop at Lululemon, you buy all these things. And then the end of the month comes and you have no money left and you didn't pay your bills because you didn't track what you were spending, right? Now think about food. What if you would eat everything you wanted all day long and at the end of the day, you're like, all right, I'm going to track it and put it in my app. And now you went over what you were allotted in your budget. What are you going to do? You can't give that food back. So just like you pre-plan your month, and you pre-plan your monthly budget, you do the same thing every day with your food. So the first most important thing about macros is planning ahead. And the way that it's so weird that I'm talking to myself because all I see is names, but it's okay. The way that you plan ahead is by tracking what you eat before you eat it. So when you are looking at your numbers, and I'm telling you, you're, you could have 100 grams of protein and you could have 50 grams of carbs and you have to, could have 25 grams of fats, which nobody has. But let's just say that's what your numbers are. As you start putting your food in before you eat it, you're now chomping away at your budget as if it was your home budget. Whatever's left is yours to, to eat or for yours to use for your home budget. So the first thing I tell everybody to do is start thinking about the staples that they eat every day. If you don't have any staples, you will. Because as you start to track food, you're going to start to become a creature of habit and you'll have things that you eat all the time. So the night before or the morning of, I automatically know I'm going to eat my cottage cheese with pineapple, my mush oatmeal, my yogurt are the top three things I eat every single day. I drink um, a Premier Protein peanut butter chocolate shake every single day. Um, I usually have a Yasso bar every single night. And I usually have Quest chips. So I put those in immediately before my day even starts. And then I start building around that food. So if I know I'm going somewhere for lunch, which I don't ever go out for lunch, um, but if I were to, I would plan ahead. If I pre-packed my food, which I usually pre-pack for the entire day, I would put all that in the app. And the, the great thing about in-app tracking, as well, as well as my fitness pal, is you could scan almost everything. You could even use Ideal Nutrition, Deliver Lean, Factor X, any of those meal plans, and you're going to find them in your tracking apps. So once you've put all that in, whatever's left is yours to figure out what you want to do with it. So let's say you put everything in for your breakfast, you put everything in for lunch, and now dinner, it's almost dinner time, and you have about 30 grams of protein, 50 carbs, and five fats. This is where you start to pay, play macros Tetris. We won't have five fats left, but let's say you have 12 fats left. Um, so playing macros Tetris, you would put in what you're planning on eating for dinner. And if it's two chicken breasts and it is a baked potato with butter, I'm doing this example for a reason, baked potato with butter, and then you're going to have broccoli with some cheese on it. So you put that in your app before you eat it, because if you put it in after, you can't give it back. We put it in the app and we look and see, oh no, my protein looks great. My carbs look fantastic. That potato took 41 of my carbs. But wow, I am way over in my fats. So I cannot eat either the, all that butter I put in there or all that cheese. So maybe I should only have half a slice of cheese and maybe only a teaspoon of butter. And let me see how that looks. So I go back in my app and I change it out and I see how it looks before I eat it. So if you're seeing a, a, a process going on or a pattern, the pattern is I'm not putting anything in my mouth before I put it in the app. Because once it's in my mouth, I can't give it back. I wish I could, but I can't. So it's super important to plan ahead, to think about what your daily budget is every day. And the easiest way to do it is if I gave you um, 150 proteins 
and you know that you're eating, or uh, let's say, I think of round number, 120 grams of protein, and you know you only eat three times a day, then you want to break that up, really? You want to break that up into three different meals. So 40 grams, 40 grams, and 40 grams. Now, let's say you have three meals, but you also like to have your protein shake. It could be 30, 30, 30. You left 30 grams of protein for your shake. So it's all a game of numbers. It's a game of making everything fit, which is why you have me. So in our welcome meeting, I don't know if you guys remember, you want to use me as your coach. Sorry, someone else just messaged me about getting in. You guys had no problem getting in, right? Just give me a thumbs up because she's saying she can't get in. Okay. I'm guessing you guys all were able to get in because you thought you're here. So I didn't see any thumbs up. Thank you, Bonnie. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, so you want to use me because let's say uh, it is two o'clock in the afternoon and you put your breakfast and you put your lunch in, you put your first snack in and you don't have a ton of carbs left, but you really want that protein bar and that protein bar is 13 carbs, but you only have a certain amount. I will help you figure out how you can work the maybe half of that protein bar with your dinner or maybe the full protein bar and only half of the amount of carbs with your dinner. On that same token, let's say you know you are going to a party on Saturday night. On Friday or Saturday morning, if you know that you're going to have two glasses of wine, you're going to put that in the app first thing in the morning so that you work around it. Every time when you, when you have something planned, if you place it, place, make it, or whatever you call it, hold the place for it, and then you work around it, then you're fine. So you really want to... Think about not just the day ahead, but what's coming up in the weekend. I know I like to have a glass of Kim Crawford, maybe two glasses of Kim Crawford over the weekend. So I will log that ahead of time because I can have it. Because if you remember from the welcome meeting, I said there's nothing on restriction. Um, when you are building recipes or if you have a crock pot recipe, you want to make sure that if you're using my fitness pal, you add each ingredient to the recipe. Um, as well as in my app. Also, if you are eating somewhere and you don't know, it doesn't say, let's say, um, Chili's Cajun chicken salad, and you have, you're somewhere that is not in the My Fitness Pal app or not in my app, you will need to break it down and say you had a burger, whatever the fat content is, which the waiter will know, how many ounces that burger is, and what was on the burger whether it was Swiss cheese or American cheese and the kind of role it was instead of just finding a random cheeseburger and using that to log in because bad information out is bad information in. So you want to make sure that everything you are putting in the app is as accurate as you can get it. So you can always reach out to me and say, Hey, I see three different chicken sandwiches in here. What should I do? And I'm going to say, you're going to build your own sandwich. You're going to do the chicken breast. You're going to do the bread. You're going to do the, everything that goes with it. Um, you want to make sure that you always have healthy food in your refrigerator or your pantry. If you have crappy food and it's at your, just you, know, you can just grab it at any time, your arm's length, that is going to be tough. Why put yourself in a position to self-sabotage yourself? So if there's stuff that you know you shouldn't have in the house for yourself, don't have it in the house. I mean, I can name a hundred things I can't have in the house because I will self-sabotage myself. And it's not that I don't have the willpower. It's just that it's there. And why can't I have it if it's there, right? And that's our thought process a lot of times. So you want to make sure that you have healthy food in your refrigerator, in your pantry. Um, and there is a video on in the Shred Tribe Zoom, uh, in the Shred Tribe YouTube that is called "Food in My Fridge," and it's from 
a couple of years ago, maybe three or four years ago. And I talk about all the different food that I keep, I show you in my kitchen, all the different foods and everything. So definitely make sure that you um, take a look at that video. Okay. Um, you want to make sure that you have grab and go stuff. And one thing I talk about in my video is when you go to Publix or wherever you shop for your deli meat, ask them to put a piece of paper in between every four or six ounces. So this way you can grab that little section and you know it's already weighed out. When I come home from the store and I purchased strawberries, I bag them before it's time. I count down my Cheerios. Everything is already done so I can grab it and go. Because I'm thinking ahead, I'm preparing myself. And that's what you guys are going to be doing. Um, think about the foods that you would put in your day. And then your goal will be to try to copy and paste that every day. Like the, the, the staples that I talked about. Um, if you have to go to out for lunch every day, because that's your job, that's not a big deal. There's every restaurant that you can possibly think of probably has their nutrition facts online because everybody's so, um, nutrition savvy right now and nutrition conscious right now and everybody that's on the GLP ones and all that kind of stuff. So you'll find the information you need right here in your hand. And I'm in here. So you can reach out to me. Um, I will tell you that tracking macros the first two weeks are very overwhelming. But if you only focus on the proteins, and that's all I want you to focus on. And um, if you're in the group and you've been in the group and you've been focusing on the three, just focus on the protein. And you'll see that it won't be so overwhelming. Because a lot of times when we have all three, we, we want to make sure it all fits together. But you don't have to do that. And you'll see it fall into line, which is amazing. Um, now, if you want, hold on. If you want to see all these yellow lines, then yes, you're gonna wanna focus on all three things and hitting your macros. But it doesn't have to be like that. So. What you don't want is that. So that's her fats. That is the, she hit her fats, but she still has 86 grams of protein left to eat. So I would reach out to her and I'll say, and she hasn't put her dinner in yet, but I would technically reach out to her and say, hey, I noticed that you haven't, you still have 86 grams of protein. What are you having for dinner? Let's put that in there. Um, I'm just looking what she has. She had Dunkin' Donuts pumpkin swirl syrup in her coffee today. And just so you know, three pumps of pumpkin swirl cereal, a uh, syrup, not cereal, syrup has 160 calories. I'm going to tell you something really quick, which is so crazy. It has 36 grams of sugar. And those sweetener pumps. They do sell sugar-free, but I'm assuming it's not um, pumpkin. And then um, you want to take a look as you're logging your food. Because she went to Texas Roadhouse, I'm guessing. And had smoked barbecue brisket, seven ounces. But if she only had five, she would have been good with her fats. So if you, you can see like all the little entries. And I will see that on yours too, because I can see hers. So you want to make sure she probably didn't log it before she had it. Because if she did, she wouldn't have had her four hard boiled eggs at lunch. She probably would have had three and that would have helped her also. But, and she would have kept the yolk out, but I'll message her about that. But you really just want to focus on your proteins. You want to focus on good information in, good information out. Um, I said we would talk about alcohol. So when you track your alcohol, it, there's no protein in alcohol. It's either carbs, fats, or both. And you actually have to manually enter your entry. You can't pick one that you see because they're not correct in any of the tracking apps. Excuse me. So let's say I'm, and this is not correct information, but let's say I'm having a glass of wine and it's 
90 calories for a glass of wine. It's five ounces, it's 90 calories. And I want to use my fats for that. Well, for every, um, so let's say you have your 90 calories. For every one of your calories, you have to think about what your fats are. It would take, it's nine fats, nine grams of fat per calorie. So you divide nine into those 90 calories. I'm using 10 fats for one glass of wine. Is it worth it? Maybe I have extra carbs left. Well, carbs would be four, right? Because it's four calories versus nine calories. So four goes into the 90 or whatever. Let's just say it's 40, 30, 20, 22 times. So I'm using 22 carbs versus the 10 fats. I could also use both, but you don't have to really do the math because when you put it in the app, you'll see what it comes to and it will figure it out for you. And you'll know, oh no, I need to use less fats. I need to use more carbs. I don't have enough of that. You can do it beforehand, but it'll always do the math for you. Same thing with your grilled chickens. And people are like, I don't know how many grams are in grilled chicken. Well, just put six ounces in your app and it will tell you how many grams it is. There's no calculation needed. And if you notice that you might need more, then you could either bump up that meal or you can um, know that you're going to have maybe a protein shake later. Um, I had started talking about this earlier. So let's say that you have... Um, 125, 20, 120 grams of protein, and you divide that out by three. That's going to be the easiest way to get your proteins in because you already know how much you need in those main meals. You also know that you can go over by 10. So let's say you break it down and you do the 40, 40, 40, you're at 120, but you want a little bit more protein at dinner, it's okay. So you want to make sure you know a head start. That's why I ask you guys, how many meals a day do you think you might be eating? Because then you could break it down and you could see how easy it is to get it in with that. Um, remember, there's nothing on restriction. So if you want to have Honey Nut Cheerios, have it. Just scan the box and see how much of it you can have. If you want to eat the Texas Roadhouse like this person had, you can have it. Just make sure that you track it and you log it. Just because I can't see it doesn't mean it didn't happen. So don't try to not put something in there because you don't want Coach Shannon not to see it, right? I want to see everything you're eating so I can help you. So we can work together so you can learn how to do macros Tetris, so you can learn how to track your food. So you start looking at the refrigerator and thinking about numbers and not food, which I talked about in our welcome meeting. You want to make sure you have all these different options. I have two or three different types of yogurt in my refrigerator right now. Uh, I have two different kinds of protein shakes because I might not need all that protein for the shake, but I might want to eat more with my, my yogurt. I always have deli meat in the house. Um, I always have rice cakes. I always have um, the popcorn that is broken up portion controlled for you, 100 calorie popcorn or whatever it is. Uh, this way, I don't have to measure anything. I don't have to guess anything. It's already done for me. You want to make sure that you are starting your day with something to eat, depending on when your day starts. So for me, it's a little different. I start my day at 3.30 in the morning. I don't eat until 10, 10.30, but that's when I literally start my day of food and I just keep eating from that point forward. If I were to start eating at 4 a.m., I would be hungry the entire day from 4 a.m., when you open up the gates, it just keeps going. So you want to make sure if you're the person that likes to have breakfast in the morning, you're going to have protein. And when you eat at any time of the day, if you eat protein with, if you, if you have carbs and you add protein to it, your carbs will break down faster versus if you ate carbs, just carbs. So if you just had um, crackers versus if you put tuna on crackers, it would break down faster. So I try to always incorporate a protein when I eat my carbs. Um, so for those that have already been tracking, this kind of doesn't apply to you, but for those that are new, today's Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you're practicing adding food in the app and trying to figure out how to make your numbers work. Um, and every day around three, between two and 4 p.m., I'll put a message in the group and say, who's ready for me to look at your macros? At that time, 
you should already have breakfast, lunch, snacks, and maybe even dinner already in there. But if I ask who's ready to look at your macros and you just come to me and you say, I haven't put anything in yet, I'm going to do it before, before I eat my dinner, then it's not going to work. So you really need to think ahead and plan it. So when I do ask around 2, or 2 to 4 p.m. that you have stuff in there so that I can, we can talk about it. Because um, I could also say, oh, you know what? On Monday when you start this, maybe I see you, this is a habit or a pattern that you do every day. Maybe let's change it and do it this way. Um, in order to change our bodies, we might have to change our habits. And that changes your life. That will help change your life style or how you live your life. So, and that's why we want to do this because we need to make those good habit changes. Good habit changes stay with you. People that have been in the tribe for a very long time are in the tribe because they enjoy the meetings. They enjoy being in the app. They've already got those habits down. They know how to track macros, but they like the accountability. That's where you want to be. Um, and it definitely helps with the accountability. I, I can tell you people that are in the meeting probably use the meetings, these meetings for that, for sure. Um, that's pretty much tracking macros. It's simple if you keep it simple. If you think into it, it will get overwhelming. So break everything down. Uh, if you're using MyFitnessPal, use the scanner as much as possible. If you're using my app, use the scanner as much as possible. Uh, if you're using my app, I can also give you meal ideas, almost like um, a pre-planned day. But if you don't cook, it's really not going to work for you because it's a lot of meals that need to be cooked. But it also gives you options, high protein, low protein, high carb, low carb, high fat, low fat, depending on what you need for the day. And you could just push a button and switch out the meal until you see something that works for you. And then it will automatically log it for you if that's what you're going to um, eat. So it's very convenient because it's basically meal planning versus you planning what you want to eat. Personally, I could never do that because I eat the same things every day um, and that is my comfort zone. And having to cook would totally throw me off and I probably wouldn't even track. So do what you know works for you besides having to plan ahead and track ahead. Um, make sure you're getting your water in, make sure you're getting your steps in. I will be adding you guys that are new into all the other groups. After this meeting, there's a sample meal plan group. There's a cheat sheets group where if you need, if you have carbs or you uh, need proteins and carbs, it'll tell you what food works for that. Or if you need carbs and fats, it'll tell you what food works for that. I personally use those cheat sheets all the time. And if you reach out to me and say, I have 16 carbs and four fats, what should I eat? I'm going to pull out the cheat sheet. I'm going to tell you, these are your options. And this is pretty much how much you're going to be able to, able to eat from that food list. So definitely use the cheat sheets when I add you in there. Please reach out to me when you have questions. Uh, for those that are new tonight, I want you to Plan ahead for tomorrow. Start logging as much as you can. Tomorrow morning, wake up, log what you can. I'm going to keep peeking in, looking to see uh, your food that you guys are logging. Um, you guys have your macros numbers, so you should see them. They're in there already. You have your report, and that is under the fork and knife icon. It's like a 17-page report that you can read that will help you as well. Make sure you read through the ebook this week because the session officially starts on Monday. Uh, check out all the YouTube videos. Make sure you watch the food in my kitchen because that will give you a lot of great ideas. All right, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to go eat some dinner. Thank you guys so much for coming on tonight and I will see you guys next Wednesday. Have a fabulous Wednesday and I look forward to the holiday shred getting started officially, officially on Monday. But this is your week to dig in and get everything prepared for Monday. Bye everyone. Have a wonderful night. Thanks for coming on. Remember always be badass.